Hey guys, Sean here from Hammerhead. I got an interesting one for you uh, proponents of the law today. It's basically a video entitled Why Canada, the government is illegitimate here in Canada. I'm going to prove to you that it is. So I want you to uh, get your favorite beverage, piece of paper and a pen and write down what I tell you to go look at. Now I'm deriving some of this from a PDF file and you can go find this on your own on the internet and it's called an excerpt from George Barr, King's Counsel, with R. Roger Smith sometime in the mid-1940s. And it's about this, what I'm going to talk about. If you guys are wondering, here it is right here. You can find it on Google. You can go search up George Barr, King's Counsel, uh, R. Roger Smith. I did a little background on who those people are. George Barr um, was the president of the Regina Bar Association in 1971. In 1917 he's an authority on constitutional law a legal advisor for Saskatchewan livestock and poultry producers plus he was involved in all kinds of uh, legal law challenges R. Roger Smith was uh, appointed Cree, uh, chief of the Cree Indians chief Wapanatak um, he wrote a book called Ho Canada H-O apostrophe Canada you can go look that book up and he's, he was a student of international constitutional law and I'm going to break it down to you. I've made some notes here. I'm going to break it down to you exactly how it works. And uh, go research this subject. If you think I'm pulling your leg, you can find all this for yourself. It's easily accessible. I found it. You can find it. So how it works under the British system, which in turn is our system, the Governor General is the government. Okay, They are the government. House of Commons, Prime Minister's Office, Senate, legislature, provincial legislatures, all those people derive their so-called authority from the governor general. He's the government. So what is their source of authority? Well, according to the British government, it's a title to land. Crown on, in chancellery. Crown land. That's where the, the, the title crown land comes from. So what happened is the British saw us as a colony. They ruled uh, us as a colony. Uh, because they they say that they had title to the landmass known as Canada. Uh, I don't know. I've never seen the paperwork to show that they had purchased it or whatever. In fact, we know they didn't purchase it. They just basically wiped out the inhabitants that were here and took it for themselves. But anyway, that's a whole other video. So something interesting happened. On December 11th, 1931, there was what was called the Statute of Westminster. And what happened there is the British government was finally getting tired trying to govern the colonies, I guess, and they said, we're going to just cut you free. We're going to let you guys, each province, become their own sovereign state. So you guys can do what you want, whatever you want to do. So the provinces became sovereign states at that point. And an interesting note is no governor general since the enactment of the Statute of Westminster has received any papers from the Crown of Chancellery of Great Britain to act as Governor General of Canada. So you're saying to yourself, well, there's a Governor General of Canada today. Yeah, there is, but they have never received any papers. They were commissioned. And this is where the fraud comes from, and this is where the, the de facto part of the government thing comes from, the illegitimate part of the government comes from, is they don't have any assent from Great Britain to become, they didn't name their, their, their successor in power as the Governor General. And they have no paperwork to prove that. So it's a commission. Well, who did the commission? Well, it was the illegitimate people back then in 1931 decided they were going to steal the Canadian uh, uh, landmass, all its resources, its wealth, and its people, and commit fraud, and uh, commission a Governor General, which has no authority. Authority is still is and still is not given by any paperwork. It's a commission without authority. So that's what happened. They decided to get their old boys club together and they put all these things in place with the guise that it was still business as usual, same system as the British Crown had gone on here, but without any authority, without any legitimacy, without any paperwork, without any writs, without anything, giving them any type of assent. So that's what went on. So... Even if you get the census takers today, if they come along, they're instructed not to list anyone as a Canadian citizen because it doesn't exist. That's interesting, eh? They will not put on the paperwork you're a Canadian citizen. It doesn't exist. So anyway, all these provincial legislators, 
Um, they supposedly derive their power from the uh, uh, lieutenant governor who gets his power directly from the governor general. Uh, so any acts or statutes or bills or anything that they pass has to have assent from the governor general. Well, there's a problem. The governor general is not a legitimate government because there was no assent given. There's no authority. There's no paperwork, as I just said. And you can find out about that. Just go read about it. Um, the power was never conferred or granted to the, uh, by the previous owner of the land of Canada to any person to enact laws, pass orders in council, administer affairs, or exercise authority over anything in Canada since 1931, that statute of Westminster. So I'm going to read that again. No power has been conferred or granted by the previous owner of the land of Canada, which is Great Britain, to any person to enact laws, pass orders in council, which is, who, who do we know right now that's passing orders in council? without anybody say. Administer affairs or exercise authority over anything in Canada since 1931. So if they don't have any power to confer anything, the Governor General is not a leg legitimate uh, um, office because it's a commission without authority, so that means that there's no government. If there's no Governor General, that Governor General is the government, according to the British system. They're the ones that get the assent, they have the title to the land, and that is where their authority is supposedly derived. Well, they don't have that. So if that doesn't exist, that means there's no government. So what do you have in place of that? You have fraud. That's what you have, and that's what we've been going on. Belief in, in this, a system that doesn't exist. And if you want to know more about that, uh, go look at Stan McDonald's uh, videos on YouTube. No commissioned governor general has ever given his or her assent signatures to create any, enact any laws, acts, or statutes in Canada. It's all fraud. You will never find a legitimate assent given by the governor general, their signature. If you see a signature, it says governor general of Canada, their signature, it is not their signature. Okay? It's given by some flunky, some person working in the office or whoever. It's not their signature. And even if it was their signature... Uh, on December 10th, 1931, it would have been legitimate. December 11th, 1931, not legitimate. That's when the fraud took place, right there. The Statute of Westminster. Go look into that. So, it's just a bunch of uh, blafooey. It's a bunch of fraud. It never existed. It never will exist. It's all been, been given fraud. So, it says here... Uh, Mr. Barr, what is the source, Mr. Smith, from authority of government in Canada? Well, Mr. Smith says, in Nova Scotia, King James VI of Scotland granted a charter to Sir William Alexander, Earl of, of Stirling, to the lands extending from Penobscot, Penobscot, Maine, to the St. Lawrence River, including what is now New Brunswick and Prince Edward Island, as well as a small acreage in the city of Edinburgh, where Stirling Castle now stands. This was declared Nova Scotia territory in the reign of Charles I, in order that baronets of Nova Scotia might take seizing of the lands without leaving Scotland. And is there a lawyer in Edinburgh who will deny the fact that the eye, uh, eyes of the profession, this bit of Scotland, is, uh, is really in Canada? See, they're debating that as well, right? So it goes on to talk about the Governor General received the authority only from the Crown and Chancellery, and as I pointed out, the Chowning, the, the, the Crown and Chancellery never gave assent uh, on December 11th, 1931 to any Governor General. So it was a commissioned uh, position after that with no authority. So in other words, what's the point of even commissioning if they don't have any authority? Ah, well see, the authority is given to them by you because they're committing fraud, but you're allowing it. That's what's going, well, that's what's gone on and that's what's going on. So when you hear Gordon and other people say that the government is illegitimate in this country, He's not telling you a lie. He's telling you the truth. Go look this stuff up. Smith and Burr PDF. You can go find it on the internet. Go read it. It's kind of lengthy. It's kind of boring because it talks about a lot of little uh, nuances and stuff in here. But you got to read through that stuff and figure out what that all is. Talks about the Privy Council in here. Department of Lands of Great Britain. Given him the authority to govern Canada, and the governor receives his appointment. He is introduced to the king as the court of St. James. 
See, this was all before 1931, though. The Canada I'm talking about now that doesn't exist is the one after the Westminster um, statute. Yeah, it says here, since the enactment of the statute of Westminster, they are not in a position to grant any powers to anyone to act as the Governor General of Canada because they gave up their rights to that by that statute. And they said, no, we don't want any more part of this. We're going to cut you all free. All the provinces can do what they like. They're now sovereign. They can go create their own individual governments. They can go do whatever they want. But that's not what's gone on, sadly. Imperial Privy Council of Canada um, talks about the Senate here. They're responsible only to the Governor General because he is the true government or she. Um, Prime Minister of Canada is only just a figurehead position. It, doesn't, it has no teeth, no authority. The Governor General is a corporation sole for the Central Legislature of Canada. Lieutenant Governor is equally a corporation sole on the legislature of each province. His powers are to act as the representative of the Governor General. So the government, Governor General is illegitimate and so is the, legislator, the, uh, the uh, provincial equivalent, the Lieutenant Governor. Yeah, letters patent. The last of these which was granted, I said, to Earl Bessborough, March 23, 1931. It says here that you will find that a proclamation issued by Sir Lyman P. Duff, which tells you that he is acting as the Governor General of Canada, and that he is to swear in the Governor General under the letters patent of June 15, 1905. These, ha these had been revoked in 1931 by the Crown in Chancellery under letters patent dated March 23, 1931. So in other words, they don't have any force. They have no, no power at all. British North American Act. It talks about it all. It talks about cabinet jurisdiction. It talks about provincial legislature, provincial cabinet. It says here, uh, what, if any difference, is there in respect to the appointment of the Governor General in Canada since the passing of the Statute of Westminster? Mr. Smith says, in answering your question, I may say without fear of contradiction that since the enactment of the Statute of Westminster, no Governor General has been dispatched to Canada by the British government or any department of that government. Instead of a Governor General, we now have a British High Commissioner, again without authority. The pre present encumberment of that office being the Re Right Honorable Malcolm MacDonald whose address is Ernscliff, Ottawa. Not the same thing. No authority. Each province is its own sovereign state after 1931. Okay. And that's how um, Britain recognizes it. And it also says here, no power has been conferred or granted by the previous owner of the land of Canada to any person to enact laws, pass order and council, administrate affairs in connection with, or to exercise authority over anything in Canada since 1931. It says it right there. I'm going to try and blow it up. But anyway, go, you have to go read these documents that I'm telling you. It says it right in this document. And it's the truth. So anyway, there's a little a little history lesson for you today. So next time you think you live in a in a uh, country that has a government, you got to understand two things: we're not a country anymore because each province is its own sovereign uh, state, and we do not have a legitimate government because there is no um, governor general that has been uh, given assent. I didn't make this stuff up, guys. Go look it up for yourself. Peace out. God bless. Bye.